once Posey, known as Alex to his friends and readers, was one of the most renowned figures to ever emerge from the ranks of the Muscogee Creek Nation. This gentle, good-natured man was educator, journalist, philosopher, humorist, statesman, and active participant in the affairs of his time. Born in the Creek Nation near Eufaula in 1873, Alex Posey lived in an era which witnessed the death of Indian nations and the birth of the state of Oklahoma. His father was of Scotch, Irish, and Creek descent, and his mother was full-blood Creek. The Muskogee tongue was Alex's first language, though his father made sure that English was later mastered in school. In 1890, when Alex was 17, he entered Bacon College, then known as Indian University near Muskogee. It was there that his literary and journalistic talents began to flower. After graduation in 1895, Posey began his short but illustrious career. He was elected to the House of Warriors, a branch of the Creek Legislature, and then was named Superintendent of the Creek Orphanage at Okmulgee. There he met and married Minnie Harris of Fayetteville, Arkansas, one of the teachers. In 1897, Alex and his wife moved to a farm near Stidham, not far from his birthplace. Here he roamed the Tulladega, a range of hills that bordered the Oktahutchee, the Sandy River, studied nature, and wrote poetry. That same year, he was called to serve as the superintendent of the Creek Nation High School in Eufaula. His poetry and prose began appearing regularly in the Indian Journal, Eufaula's newspaper, and in 1900, he became editor of that paper. As editor, Alex began writing the humorous and satirical column known as the Fuss Fixico Letters. These imaginative letters focused attention on the fraud and injustice being done to the Indians in the territory and were reprinted in newspapers all across the United States. In 1904, Posey went to work for the Dolls Commission, headquartered in Muskogee, to assist in its efforts to finish the allotment process among the Creeks. Posey spent three years as a field worker and interpreter, locating lost and reluctant Creek Indians and helping to ensure that they got their fair share of allotted lands, the only remnant of a once powerful Indian nation. By 1907, Posey's work with the Dolls Commission was finished. Tribal lands had been dissolved, the new state had formed, and a sad sense of change hung in the air for Oklahoma's Indians. Alex had decided to return to Eufaula and take up ownership of the Indian Journal. But this was not to be. In May 1908, Alex Posey drowned while attempting to cross the rain-swollen waters of the North Canadian River in a boat. The boat capsized, throwing him into the swirling waters. Posey could only grasp at branches that hung out over the water's edge while rescue workers tried to save him. Eventually, the waters swept him away, and he was lost. But he left a legacy of imaginative words describing the natural world around him and his feelings about that world. Listen now to his poetry, his words, and see images of the land that inspired them. In Toledega, where mountains lift their heads to clouds that nestle low, where constant beauty spreads sublimer scenes below, where gray and massive rocks o'erhang rough heights sublime, where awful grandeur mocks the brush and poet rhyme. We saw the evening blush above the rugged range. We heard the river rush far off and faint and strange. Brook Song. If you'll but pause and listen, listen long, there are far off voices in a wee brook song that come as voices, come from out the years, and you will dream you hear the voice once hers, perhaps, and when dawn, blinded by your tears. To a robin, out in the golden air, out where the skies are fair, I hear a song of gladness with never note of sadness. Sing out thy heart's delight and mine of every sorrow. Sing, sweet bird, till the night and come again tomorrow. Flowers. When flowers fade, 
Why does their fragrance linger still? Have they a spirit too that death can never kill? Is it their judgment day when from the dark, dark mold of April and of May their blooms again unfold? The deer, from out the folded hills that lie beneath a thin blue veil, there comes a deer to drink from Limbo's waters in the dale. Then flies he back into the hills, and sitting there I dream and watch, as vain as he, my image lying in the stream. My Hermitage, between me and the noise of strife are walls of mountains set with pine. The dusty, care-strewn paths of life lead not to this retreat of mine. I hear the morning wind awake beyond the purple height, and in the growing light the lap of lilies on the lake. I live with echo and with song, and beauty leads me forth to see her temple's colonnades, and long together do we love to be. The mountains wall me in, complete, and leave me but a bit of blue above. All here the days are sweet, how sweet, and all the long nights through. I hear the river flowing by along its sandy bars. Behold, far in the midnight sky, an infinity of stars. Tis sweet when all is still, when darkness gathers round to hear from hill to hill the far, the wondering sound. The cedar and the pine have pitched their tents with me, what freedom vast is mine, what room, what mystery. Upon the dreamy southern breeze that steals in like a laden bee and sighs for rest among the trees are far-blown bits of melody. Autumn. In the dreamy silence of the afternoon, a cloth of gold is woven over wood and prairie, and the jaybird, newly fallen from the heaven, scatters cordial greetings and the air is filled with scarlet leaves that, dropping, rise again, as ever, with a useless sigh for rest, and it is autumn. Sunset By coward clouds forgot, by yonder sunset flow, the day, in battle shot, lies bleeding, weak, and low. My fancy why do trees along the river lean so far out o'er the tide? Very wise men tell me why, but I am never satisfied. And so I keep my fancy still, that trees lean out to save the drowning from the clutches of the cold, remorseless wave.